If you follow true crime, be sure to follow True Crime Today wherever you download podcasts. There we cover everything in the world of true crime, like major stories such as Chad and Lori Daybell or Alex Murdoch, to smaller, lesser-known hometown stories that make a major impact on their communities. We take a deep look at the people, places, and psychology in real time that all come together to create these stories. Search True Crime Today wherever you get your podcasts and press subscribe. So you finally found the person for you. It feels good. It's wonderful. Oops, he's the wrong color. Turns out your parents are racist. How does that work out? That crazy insane. My crazy family. Welcome to the program. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Check us out for three days free. They're commercial free. You get access to all of our episodes, the advanced episodes, the archive. It's all there for you. There's 42 of them now to binge away on. That's plenty of hours of listening. Should you be going anywhere anytime soon and you like the show and you just want to, you know, just prepare yourself. Say you're driving to a family reunion somewhere through yeah. a snowstorm. Uh, this should be a good, uh, good listen. For you uh and it hey, really would. yeah and, and if you have crazy family stories we want to hear them we do all you have to do is go to crazyfampod.com to share your crazy family story and feel free to embellish if you need to <laughs> um just just leave off the names we'll we'll change names anyway especially if we can tell that they're real names and we can tell yes yes we can we we do realize that when you rename everybody rufus and muggles and and Sparknick, uh, that you're probably renaming everybody after your pets, and that's and cool. That's okay, we're good with that. We're good with yeah. That. I'm all right with that. That works. So, there's, I just invented new pet names right there. Sparknick. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm just putting like syllables together that sound like they might be a dog name. I think that's cute. I had. Uh, I once had a cat named Scruffles. In fact, you gave I me that cat. Scruffles. Yeah, uh, that cat, and uh, that cat lived a long life. It was and it was a funny because I used that that name on the air as a bit uh, when I would have cats being involved in like funny situations, usually horrific situations. But right. uh, but it was always Scruffles. Oh my God, Scruffles! And then I got a cat and I named it Scruffles. So anyway, well, it's kind of like Tunsis from the old days of SNL. I you have know, it's a, just a name that fits. I have one. I and Tunsis has escaped the barn, and Tunsis now lives just on the property and roams the seven acres. And wants nothing to do with me. And it was once in, in it was he was really one of my friendliest cats. And now he's out there getting a taste of the wild, the wild, delicious mice and rats and squirrels and whatever else he's eating. And um You were holding him back. I was. I I and you know, um we actually we sat down one day and um uh we we were looking at each other in the barn and we sang Wilson Phillips release me um, yeah. together. And like, will you release me? Yeah. It was a moment. Come was it on. hard for yeah. you to let go? It was, it was come yeah. on, baby. Come on, baby. You know, it's time to just let go. Release me. Cause I want to be free. Somehow you just got to release me. And I didn't let the cat out. No, it, it, it snuck out and it's never come back. But I know where it sleeps. It sleeps in a horse trailer that's like fortified and completely metal. So bravo to the cat. Very smart. Very safe place to be. Nothing can get in there other than the cat. Uh, and then it just walks around. So, yeah, I have a tune. So you've seen him. You know he's still there. I have, yes. So I'm just the other day when I was driving in, he was walking along the fence, gave me the paw, and he was smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I was just going to ask, do you guys ever make eye contact, you know? We do. And he's wearing an eye patch now, too, which is kind of weird. I think he's either a pirate or he's joined a gang. Mm. I so. I would opt for a gang. I hope he's joined a gang. He's spray painting a lot of weird shit around the property. Um, yeah. It's weird cat. Like language. ass prints and, and yeah. paw prints. And it's, it's bizarre. It is really bizarre. Yeah. So I'm really yeah. sorry you've gone through that. Well, you know, you live and you learn. So. Not every, yep. not every yep. cat can be perfect. What do we got for our first story today? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this one's a good one. A decade of ups and downs. She's married to my husband's brother. Okay, so sister-in-law. Okay. She's moved 15 minutes from our house. Negativity. She's always been negative. Passive-aggressive. A manipulator. 
Now I understand her behavior is classic narcissism. I've called her out on negative comments she makes, and then she turns it on me like it's my fault. Oh, she's good. We've had multiple falling outs. Then we talk about it and we move on. I should have never given her the opportunity to come back into my life over and over again, but it's difficult with her being family. Our kids are close and our husbands are close brothers. She manipulates. She tries to become friends with my friends and acquaintances by following them on social media and DMing them. When we had a falling out a while ago, she messaged one of my best friends to try and tell her side of the story. Holy shit, this girl's good. And of course, my friend told me if I did that to one of her friends, she would come for blood. Lavish gifts. She always buys expensive gifts, then makes comments about how expensive they were. She's made comments about how she's always giving things to others, but never gets back in return. My response to her was, you should give things because you are a giver and not expect anything in return. Everything is tit for tat, backhanded comments. Like on my birthday, I had a big party. I went to take a picture with her and she says, oh, now you finally want to take a picture with me? I got my makeup done for an event, and instead of saying I look nice, she said, well, that makeup artist made you look like a different race. (laughs) (laughs) So here's the last straw. Right? She comes to my house for my daughter's birthday, and Thanksgiving completely ignores me when walking in, is in a mood the whole night, and starts negatively talking about a friend I introduced her to for facials. When I ask her what the issue is, she then goes on a rampage calls me a bitch in front of my kids and her kids and then storms out of the house blocked and deleted on all formats never want to speak to her again but since it's family i will need to eventually be in the same room with her sounds like you got more than a narcissistic personality disorder going on here Jesus, i think you got i think you got uh i'm not a doctor but i've played one on tv no i haven't um, well, but you've dealt with enough crazy people I've dealt with enough shit. Um, I mean, the, the, I, it would sound a total narcissistic personality disorder through most of it. But then when you get the, you're a bitch, I'm storming out, um, and constantly causing, um, problems, not just like, you know, making a mean comment, but literally disruptions in the flow of events, uh, and, and making others feel uncomfortable you got a borderline you're dealing with there. I think you're right. And those typically, there's not a lot you can do. Um, I, I, you know, just, you know, it's about boundaries for you is what it's going to be for you. So you got to really stick to those boundaries. And I get it. You're going to see her at family stuff. The brothers are close. The kids are close. Find a way to have boundaries and a surface relationship there for the sake of your family and your kids and you don't have to let that person in any more than that surface just know that you are in control of that she is not and she can do all the shows she wants all of the look at this i'm going to cause this or that Mm -hmm. be calm what you do it's a strategy called be the quiet rock i like that you are a quiet rock Nothing happens. And eventually people get sick of the quiet rock, especially narcissists and borderlines, and they walk away because nothing they can say or do manipulates that quiet rock because it's a quiet. Is that called gray rocking? Yeah, it's a gray rock. Yeah, gray rocking. I think, yeah, I was thinking quiet rock, gray rocking. No, I like the quiet rock, too, because, you know, you're going to provoke this person if you say things. So you should kind of be quiet. There's nothing you can say that's going to be good. So when you say things, make sure it's very neutral, very much just bullshit her if you need to. I mean, that that's yeah. really how you have to handle people like this is bullshit them or be very quiet. So, and even when you bullshit them, they're going to still try and twist things because that's what they do. They're essentially always going to try and be a victim in some way, shape, or form, but look like they're the superhero at the same time and be very dramatic when things are kind of going out of control or if they don't feel in control, then they go fucking nuts and then they run away and they shake up the mood and shake up the environment for everybody and ultimately still pours all the attention back onto them and everyone else should be apologizing to them for making them feel this way when it's really all this crazy shit in their head so gray rocket quiet rocket whatever you want it 30 rocket 
And <laughs> I like your quiet rock yeah. because you know, it makes more sense to me. A gray rock, it's to me that brings me back to duck, duck, gray goose, um, or <laughs> duck, duck, gray duck, whatever. Um, We're playing duck, duck, gray goose back in first grade. It was beginning well, of a I long problem. I played duck, duck, gray duck because I'm from Minnesota and we didn't, we, we had gray ducks for some reason. But, but I, I think to deal with a narcissist, you need to go quiet. You need yeah. to, to just let them spin around in front of you like the Tasmanian devil yep. and you just sit there. And, you know, you're you're no contact. You're yeah. not relating to them. You're not giving them any fuel for their fire. They'll go away. And just know this isn't about winning. This is about uh, you maintaining sanity. Uh, so yeah. so don't feel bad when you are the quiet rock there and they start spinning out of control and do utterly crazy shit and somehow try and suck you into it. Just let them do it. But don't get sucked in. Like, okay, well, you know, I'm over here. And it's hard. It is because and, and it's hard not to almost like get sucked in out of just pure morbid curiosity of like what the fuck did they do now? And and but you just have to not care. You have to just live your life, focus on you, focus on being positive, focus on being a good mom to your kids, focus on being a good wife to your husband, focus on you know, just being a good person for yourself and being a happy mm -hmm. person for yourself. And and all of that don't don't put so much weight on who you are to this person because you are just really another body count to them for the amount of people that they've, you know, pushed away throughout their lives with this sort of behavior. And they'll keep going until it gets really fucking bad. So just find a way to deal, find a way to gray rocket, and it works. I've done and it. Make some popcorn and just sit back and watch the show. It it's coming from fucking experience. Uh yeah, yeah do it. It works. Hard. But but it's not as hard as you may think. Quite honestly, they they get you so sucked in. Uh, but when you realize there's nothing I can do here, um, it's really it's very releasing. It's very uh, you know just okay. I'm good. Like uh, this this person doesn't have to affect my happiness. They can go do whatever they want, and I'm not going to be there to be like, well, that choice is not going to make you very happy. What are you doing? Let them make it. Let them fucking make it. Uh, because they'll do what they will, and then. It, it'd be look completely crazy because it kind of is. So gray rocket. Amen. Another amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! All right. I am. All right. Our next story. Me. I am female and 30 and my boyfriend, male 33. We've been dating for 22 years. I'm sorry. Tw two years. Wow. That's a long <laughs> one. Oh, Shit, Tony, like can, Aiden. I, can I confess? Yeah. Um, today is my birthday when we're recording this, and I've had a little Bailey's in my coffee. <laughs> well, happy birthday to you! Well, thank you. So I, I might, I might have a little trouble reading because I really saw that as twenty-two years. <laughs> it's kind of like the time we uh, saw the groundhog, and uh, right? I, uh, I came downstairs <laughs> with a giant Central Perk size mug of coffee uh, that was half Kahlua. <laughs> Yeah, And then I tried to read the proclamation at like 6.30 in the morning and I couldn't get through it. <laughs> On an empty stomach with a yeah. bunch of alcohol. Like, Stacy, read this. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what's happened. I didn't have breakfast. I got up. Um, I made some coffee and it didn't... I made like a very small amount of coffee and I, that, that cup is full, baby. It is full. Nice. Now you're tempting me to do that because I'm working on social media the rest of the day. Uh, and uh, now you're tempting me. It was like, that kind of sounds good. It's kind of gray and dreary and shitty here. And uh, yeah. uh, maybe it'll help to continue. on. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you know, cheers. It's my birthday. I yeah. give you permission to drink while you work. Awesome. Happy birthday. <laughs> There's my reason today. It's Stacy's. There you go. It's Stacy's birthday. Everybody drink. Dad, why are you drinking again? It's Stacy's fucking birthday. <laughs> why don't you go play with Legos? I haven't played Lego since I was two. The, the Lincoln Logs or something. Just, just play with play with yourself. I don't give a just shit. Go. Pet, you, you fucking animals. Go pet them. Just, animals need food. Feed them. <laughs> no, this is not how my house works. <laughs> no, it's not. No, I can attest to that. It's not. <laughs> okay, uh, let me, yes, let me try again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've been dating for two years. Just two years. We intend to marry, it says. 
I told my parents I would like to marry my boyfriend, and they have responded that they will disown me if I start living with and or marry my boyfriend. Here's why. They are very conservative. A man and a woman living together is basically the same as getting married. They're serious about disowning me. They're not just saying it to discourage me. My parents' only reason for objecting to this relationship is because my mm-hmm. boyfriend is black. Mm-hmm. There we go. My parents have never met my boyfriend, and they refuse to meet him or hear anything about him. My parents are Korean who mostly lived and still live in Korea. I am a Korean American who have spent about a third of my life in the States. My parents' racism runs so deep and extreme that there's nothing anyone can do about it. So let's put racism to the side and talk about family and couple dynamic. Can couples who get married despite their parents' objection lead happy lives? Yes. My marriage will be so high stakes since I will have lost my parents because of it. If he ever does anything that's the slightest bit disappointing or hurting to me, which I'm pretty sure we'll both deal with because it's inevitably a marriage, I'm scared I'll go, I've given up my parents for us and this is how you treat me and that I'll grow bitter on him. No matter how racist, close-minded, and bigoted they are, I still love my parents. It will be painful living my life without them. I can't even bear the thought of not seeing them until they pass away and finally see them at their funeral. That is a shitty situation. Well, I think you will miss the idea of who you you thought your parents were. Mm -hmm. However, the reality is they're not them. And... You know, you you had, uh, assuming you're close with them, it sounds like somewhat, that you had some good memories growing up with them. That doesn't change those moments that they had of of raising you and, and having formative, positive experiences. But people change, although in this case, it seems like it's an example of them not changing and you just finding out uh, a rather dark point of their uh, outlook on things that could you know, make them disown you, which is, I can't imagine any reason for disowning my child unless they went on like a murder spree. Uh, yeah, and even then, would I mean, mm, if Harper decided to wake up one morning and just killed a bunch of people, yeah, you done. would still love her. You adore that girl. You would still love her. I, I would probably try and talk and f- figure, and uh, you're right, there would be a, a level of, but it would certainly be a different dynamic. I, I It would be... Uh, how can you how can I help this person get as mentally right as they can for the rest of their life? Mm-hmm. Because there's no hope anymore if somebody does something like that. It's it's how, how can you live in some peace, you know, give get some forgiveness and have some happiness in your life. Um, it, and but realize the what you've done is is horrible, um, you know, and if they're just completely, you know, gone to that, I think if anyone's doing that, they're already fucking gone for the most part. There's not a lot of reasoning you're going to get there. Um, but you would you would go visit her in jail. You wouldn't cut her off, would you? Unless they were completely crazy and con- if she was sitting there trying to justify it and saying if they were clearly guilty, if they wouldn't accept it. Yeah, I would. I would cut anybody off that was doing something horrible like that. I love playing like worst case scenario because that's what I do with everything in my life. (laughs) Yeah, me too. And I try really not to. But um, but no, I mean, I I think there's a there's a line with anybody and everyone, depending on how fucked up their belief system is. And if they're willing to disown you and not have any contact with you because of who you marry, I think that may need make to, or excuse me, that may be a wake up call for you. And it's a sad one. And it's a really hard one to deal with of understanding that their love is very conditional and, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's not as unconditional as you may have thought it was. And unless you are willing to say, okay, I'm going to go along with the, stupid bullshit that my family has done forever and we have to marry within our race and that's the only way to do it and everything else is bad um then go ahead and do it then join the racist club and and but pick a side if you're just gonna go like kind of well i'm gonna break up with him but i'm not racist um yeah you kind of are you so either go full-on racist like your parents and only only marry within your your race and there's plenty of people who do that within their cultures and if that's your thing okay whatever um but um, or you don't and you start a new and you say, you know what, this was fucked up. I'm not going to raise my kids like this. And you start a new line of your generation of your family that uh, is a little more enlightened than the last. 
Yeah. And, there's, and there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of times as we grow, we start, you know, we think it's our family, it's our parents, it's the aunts and uncles. And then slowly you start realizing, holy shit, I'm the parent, I'm the aunt, I'm the uncle. And going forward is the family. It's not behind. They die eventually. They've yeah. done, they've done their part. They've lived their life. They're there and they can have their opinions, but who would you rather be in a good grace with the people going forward that you want to love and raise and love you or the people who are rather closed minded unconditionally loving you uh, and will eventually die. Um, and I don't know. What do you want? Do you want to be that person saying that to your kids? Do you want to well, say that's the thing. you get to start the family over? You get to yeah. marry the person you're in love with and you can't, you can't, you can't really choose who you fall in love with. It just happens, no. you know, especially if you're not and, racist. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so you get to, to forge the path ahead of what your family is going to look like. And if that means leaving your racist parents in, in the past, just like you talked about, Tony, then that's it. You know, your family gets to move forward the way you want it to. You get to shape what it looks like. You have to define it. Um, and, you know, sometimes I guess you can have boundaries that we we're asking early, like, can you have a relationship with someone uh, even if the parents, you know, uh, yeah, you can. Um, sometimes it is boundaries where if they do speak with you, they only want to speak with you. Then if you want that, it's your choice. Or you can say, fuck it. It's this is my life. I'm an adult. You can grow the fuck up and love me for who I am uh, or not. But that's your choice, not mine. And I'm happy either way because I've found the love of my life and I've grown from that parental love uh, into a reciprocal love uh, of, of, of a romantic relationship, of, of a partnership. And as we grow, that's what we go into. We, we leave the, uh, the parental area and we become the parental area for somebody else sometimes mm -hmm. um, uh, or just in that reciprocal adult relationship, uh, giving and receiving love there. Clearly, they're saying, we're not going to give you love if you love the person you love. Who the fuck says that to somebody? Yeah. That's exactly what they're saying to you. Do you want to love somebody who says that to you? It, it, it's Ugh. it's a horribly hard thing to wrap your mind around, especially with parents that you love uh, and, and accept reality on reality's terms. But that's kind of what reality is here. Well, and it's it's extremely painful. They're they're cutting out a potential son-in-law who could be the greatest thing in their lives, yeah. you know? Well, I'm going to assume here, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb, they're going to be racist against anyone that's not Korean. So it's not just that he's black. I think if he was white, if he was Indian, if he was anything not Korean, because, yeah. I mean, that sounds like just kind of how it, um, uh, it, uh, it works uh, with a lot of, you know, cultures and uh, that some are, more enlightened than others and some parts of it are and some aren't it just depends on the individual beliefs it depends on the person and if that's how they are sorry that it sucks i mean you can trace it back and you can understand the context of it because look at this how it's existed in this culture for a long period of time and within my family for a long period of time you don't have to follow the, the leader you don't have to follow them you it gets better when people evolve and start going you know i didn't agree with that you know Fuck, I mean, uh, you know, if I look back in, you know, the bloodlines of uh, my family, more specifically Harper, um, I know over on her mom, mom's side, there was some guy who, like, stabbed a mule in the ass in the 1800s uh, <laughs> and then had to, like, flee to another state and was, like, a what? criminal and shit. But it's like, like, okay, people do dumb shit. We don't keep doing the same stupid shit that other generations did. Let's, Is this a real story? Yeah, it's a real story. Yeah. I don't know. I guess people stabbed mules in the ass and got angry. After watching uh, after watching the older version of Yellowstone, I understand it a little bit more. Uh, the 1883 or whatever it was. But it, it's just, we evolve. We change. You don't have to keep doing the same shit that everybody else did that they thought was proper. Because you know what? Life's a lot easier when you're not worrying about pleasing uh, the previous generation. Oh, and it's exhausting. They they get stuck in their old ways. They don't know how to evolve anymore. They've stopped evolving. They just and you're not asking. They, yeah, you're not asking. It's, yeah, it's it's exhausting. So it's best to just take a deep breath and go. That's the way they're going to be. And if they're not going to try to change themselves and better themselves, then I'm just going to fucking move on. Yeah, it's not like I mean, it, it's it's a very normal thing you're asking for here. It's not like you're saying, and uh, mom and dad, I'm going to go live uh, in a thruple 
with right. uh, two 18 year old boys who are fresh out of high school and they're I'm gonna it's like it's, it's a little it's not some weird kind of non-traditional or adventurous or whatever you want to call it way of living you're asking you, you want to get married to the man you love and he happens to be black and you're Korean big fucking deal yeah you're you gonna know. have fucking beautiful babies yeah so go you know? <laughs> go enjoy it go go live life go yes continue to make the world a better place by helping to mix everybody together so we don't fucking have all this stupid racism amen see there's a fucking amen again i know i'm on a fucking roll today i should start a like a fucking uh church or something <laughs> yes yes <laughs> go up every okay. week preach and be like scientology we'll get to xenu and uh eventually it'll be uh it'll be all good we'll get to xenu and do baileys more often yeah <laughs> it makes the show even more fun it really does yes, it does yep. well i've had a blast all together but i didn't realize that a little bailey's in there can can just push me right over the edge it's wonderful I love bailey's it bailey's makes the day better it does the, all right what oh, else i have got? that i have that big one from sam's club that big <laughs> giant ass 45 50 dollar bailey yeah yeah so yeah. you know you, you could have because everybody's like oh it's a little bailey's and like you're you picturing like a little like uh, I get it. Well, I don't know what the what do you call the small bottles? Uh, there, there's like uh, like the like the carry on size. Yeah, like like something travel. small. Yeah, like the one you buy behind the counter at like the yeah like Seven Eleven. But there, no, you 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 just change the image in everyone's mind when you're sitting there <laughs> pouring a little Bailey's in your coffee to the giant Sam's Club economy size version. That's like a quarter of the size of you. That's <laughs> I have to use two hands to lift it. I shit you not. Oh, so it looks like basically like a 12 year old is pouring a very large thing of Bailey's. Uh, That's exactly what it looks like. Like I had to secure the bottle to to, you know, actually pour it into the cup and not spill all over as it all comes out. So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, update your mental image, everyone, because that's yep. what's really going on here. That's exactly <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Love it. All right. Let's go to uh, our, our next one. If you have a story, we want to hear at crazyfampod.com is where you can uh, write in anonymously or call in toll free 833 Cray Fam. That's 833 Cray Fam. What do we got? Okay. Every year, most members of our family make specific Christmas lists, and we only buy items off the list, including Jenny. Another family member, Kara, Asked which gifts are still available, and I sent her a list of all the presents that I know have been bought off of Jenny's list. I also got this brilliant idea to add check marks in front of each person's bulleted list on Google Documents to avoid future confusion. Well, Jenny gets defensive. Ask me if I meant to tell her what gift she was already receiving. Then she tells everyone not to use the checkmark, checkmark system I created to keep the Christmas Day surprise. But my thought is, is it even a surprise if you know we're only getting you presents off this list? Like, why even have a list then? It's not even that long. You know you're getting a lot of items. Doesn't that just take the fun out of Christmas gifts and Completely. giving? Just don't do the, like, print your own private version of it. She had, yeah. a, she had a good point to say, don't go off the list if you want to be surprised. Because most times people don't get everything on their list. And and they it's a nice little surprise uh, that's a positive one in our world, which we have very few of, that are, oh, I got this. Great. That's exciting. I don't want to know what I'm getting for Christmas. That's what I hate about being adult. It was like, what do you want? You know, yeah, this would be good. And OK, it's it's I'm, I just it's coming in through Amazon. It'll be here by like the 7th of December. Yeah. Oh, OK, thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. But but those little like Harper's very good about it with me. She's like, she knows I like surprises. So she's good about it and i'm not telling you what i got you dad and she has her own little amazon account that i don't look at and you know so she, so she can buy stuff and then you know buy all sorts of other bomb making equipment that i don't know about as well um, <laughs> but, i'm kidding of course um but uh yeah so but no i mean no the, the, you're i see you were just trying to be it's just two different ways of thinking one is very literal very productive very um, you know, check the boxes. I get it. I'm that way on a lot of things. But when it comes to this, it's a different outlook. And yeah, you don't put the checkbox that everybody sees the shared list. Put the list out there, print it, fucking check a box with a pen. It exists. 
Yeah. Well, and not everything has to be like a, a you know, a, a shower list at Target, you know? Yeah. How about getting to know the person and actually thinking about the gift you're going to get them? Yeah. Like just get them an Amazon gift card. <laughs> <laughs> And say, I don't but know, you know what? I don't know That's anything. the thing. If if somebody is really hard to buy for, yeah. and I my whole family, to me, I feel like they're really difficult to buy for, especially my husband. It's like he can buy whatever he wants. Yeah. So I don't know what to get him. And yeah, sometimes it's just best to to say, well, um, here's a coupon for something. You know, sure. Cash it in. Here's half off at Denny's. A uh, Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity. It's a gift <laughs> that says, "I well, love you." <laughs> You know, but what if it's, what if it's just, you know, I'd like to spend a, an evening with you with no phones, sure. you know, yeah, that could mean yeah. a lot. And then, and then you're like, oh, this is a good idea. Then he sends you one and says, I'd like to spend an evening with no pants. And then it's like, well, this isn't quite the same type of, you know? it's a little different. <laughs> a little yeah. Different. And that wouldn't be appropriate to send yeah, to your dad. Exactly. But I mean, and then you get the cards mixed up and it's like, oh shit, you gave your dad the one with the no pants thing. Yeah. And it's like. Oh, and the even weirder is when your dad's like, all right, when are we going to cash this coupon? <laughs> Sends you a, a text when we get together. Wink, coupon wink. coupon number 42 here in the book. I'm ready to cash that shit in. Yeah, oh, then, it, then, no. then it gets really fucking weird. Um, so, no, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with her uh, saying don't go to the Christmas list online. This it's, it's, yeah. it doesn't have to be a tiff. It's just you, you have different ways of thinking and just. Talk it up to that. It is. And there might be an age difference in here as well. Yeah. You know, maybe somebody's a little younger and and sees, hey, I'm really good at Google Docs and I'm going to make this thing and everybody's going to use it. Well, not everybody likes that shit. Yeah. And maybe your family just hates you. I mean, that could be it too. At the well, end that, of the day. That's always a possibility. Everyone just doesn't love you. And they're just trying to single you out because you uh, outed everyone's Christmas gift. So they, mm -hmm. they, they basically, they're trying to cancel you is what they're going to do. Uh, soon you'll show up for the holidays and everyone will pretend they don't know who you are and you'll be hauled off the property by the police. So Merry Christmas. Yeah, there's that. Merry fucking Christmas. Um, but no, I mean, just, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. It's just different ways of thinking. Yeah, so, it is. And it's okay. Yeah, it is. If you got a, a crazy family story, how do they, uh, how do they get it to us? Make sure you go to crazyfampod.com. You can share the story right there, or you can give us a call at 1 833 Cray Fam. That's 1 833 272 9326. We would love to hear those stories. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and uh, even get advanced episodes of the show, the archive, all commercial free. Check it out there. Apple Podcasts. Uh, just uh, press subscribe and uh, check it out for. Uh, three days for free, even. We do greatly appreciate that support. Until next time. For Stacy, Tony Bruski, thanks for listening to My Crazy Family. That crazy insane. My Crazy Family.